Well, good afternoon, beloved. This is Pastor D.L. Foster, founder and president of the Overcomers Network. And today I want to talk to you about something that I believe is going to help you in terms of your journey with the Lord and in dealing with past SSA, homosexuality, lesbianism, uh, transgenderism, and uh, uh, other sexual sins or sexual backgrounds that you may be struggling or have struggled with. But first, I'd like to pray, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we do thank and praise you on today for goodness and mercy. Father, we thank you today for how you have blessed us for another day. You blessed us on this day, Lord, created this day to give us an opportunity to praise you and to rejoice in it. Father, we do acknowledge you today that you are God above all and that you are our source, our light. We thank you for your word and for th that your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. We pray now for each person that is going to hear and to see this particular video teaching. God, we pray that your word would be illuminated unto them, that it would touch into the innermost parts of their soul, that it would give them light and uh, a passion, oh God, that they would reach out and to connect with you in a way, in a deeper way that they've never connected before. We thank you right now that the works of the devil are destroyed in the name of Jesus. And we lift up your glory in all of the earth. In the name of Jesus, we do pray and believe. Amen. Well, beloved, as I said, I want to talk to you today about something that is um, a, an issue, I believe, with many of you as believers who have struggled in the past with homosexuality and different other sexual immoralities, perhaps even heterosexual sins such as pornography and uh, fornication, adultery, and different things like that. Uh, because I want to, as a teacher given by God per Ephesians 4, I want to help illuminate and exposit to you uh, the treasures of the Word of God that will help you to be more secure, more confident in this journey that God has given us to run. The Bible says that we are to run with patience the race that is set before us, and we can't get off the race, and so we have to run it. We have to run it with patience and we can run it with confidence, knowing that God within us will not leave us nor will he forsake us. I want to read into your hearing from, a, from two passages of scripture first, and then from that I want to talk to you about sanctification. The first passage of scripture is coming from, the, from 1 Corinthians, the sixth chapter, and the ninth through the tenth, uh, ninth through the eleventh verses, and it says, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners, shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but you have been washed, but you are sanctified, and you are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. The second passage of Scripture I want to read to you is from first, uh, 2 Corinthians 6 and 14. 2 Corinthians 6 and 14. If you have your Bibles, you can just turn there with me so that you can see it for yourself. 2 Corinthians 6, and then I'm going to read 14 through 18. Then we're going to turn to 2 Corinthians 7 and 1 and read that scripture as well. So 2 Corinthians 6 and 14 reads, Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? And what concord hath Christ with Belial? And what part hath he that believeth with that of an infidel? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. And God has said, I will dwell in them, and I will walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, said the Lord. And touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and I will be a father unto you, and, be, and you shall be my sons and daughters, said the Lord Almighty. 
chapter 7, verse 1, having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. And that is the word of the Lord um, in this particular context of discussion that I want to share with you today from this uh, topic, from this subject. Let us focus our minds on it that sanctification is the process. Sanctification is the process. Why is sanctification the process? Well, first of all, sanctification is the process because it is what God has given us in terms of how we develop as believers on a journey with him. Sanctification is the work of the Holy Spirit. And I might add the exclusive work of the Holy Spirit in the life of the believer that matures him over the course of his, journey, his or her journey with the Lord Jesus. The passages of scripture that I read in your hearing uh, will form the basis of what I want to say to you about this journey, this process, this thing called sanctification. You don't have to be afraid of that word. It's not a scary word. It's not a church word. It is a Bible word. It is a God word. And it is something that you yourself must not only understand, but embrace for yourself because it is what God desires for your life, that you would be sanctified. In theological terms, sanctification simply means to set apart. It is as if you take an object and put it to the side for an exclusive purpose, for an exclusive use. And beloved, that is what God has done for you as he has saved you and delivered you, is that he has taken you out of the kingdom of darkness and put you in to his kingdom set apart for his exclusive use. Now that doesn't mean that you can't have dreams and visions and desires for your life and go to school and graduate from college and do different things like that, but it is God's exclusive use of your life, your voice, your image. Everything that you are and everything that you will be becomes part of his, um, part of what he uses for his glory. And so on today, sanctification is the process. You are in a process right now, and that process is called sanctification. Now, I want to say something about process. Process cannot mean whatever you desire it to mean. Process cannot be crafted by your own definition for the simple reason that you are not God. Only God can define what the process is for those who believe in him. And beloved, that process is sanctification. Sanctification, again, is a tool. It's a shaping tool. It's a maturing tool. It's a, it's a tool. It's like the, the potter's wheel where God is molding you and shaping you, using the Holy Spirit to take you from one place to another, from glory to glory and from faith to faith, higher and higher in him, from one level to the next level. How do we get there? It is by that vehicle, that process called sanctification. When I was growing up in the church, uh, we were called the sanctified church. And primarily we were known because of uh, the way we dressed and how we rejoiced in the Lord and our music and our manner of worship. But I want to say to you today that while all of that is wonderful and all of that is good, that is not sanctification. Sanctification is how I live out my life on Monday, on Tuesday, on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. How do I live my life in terms of how do I honor and please God with what I do, what I say, and how I think, praise God. And so sanctification then is this process that God has given us, and it is a beautiful process. I thank God that I have been in the process 24 years now, since my initial salvation, since my initial decision to follow Jesus Christ, I have been in the process of sanctification. Well, some might say, well, Pastor Foster, when will you, uh, when is it over with? When is this done? Well, beloved, I wish that I could tell you that in five years, you know, you would get a postcard from God and that postcard would say, guess what? Uh, you have now completed the process of sanctification and here's your diploma. But unfortunately, those 
that doesn't happen. God gives us no promises, no guarantees about when his work in us will be finished. And that's why we ought to be patient with the process. Did you hear me what I said just now? You have to be patient with the process. Uh, since when does the clay tell the potter it is finished? Since when does the clay tell the master worker when, it, when he is done or when the process is over? Uh, it is true, we are the clay, he is the potter, he is the potter, we are the clay. And so we are in his hands to be shaped, to be molded, to be made into the image of Christ, whereby we can glorify God in our bodies and with our spirits. And so I want to give you and share with you three points of sanctification. Before I get to that, I want to say to you that the sanctification is, the sanctification journey is what I'd like to call conjugated. It is in a is in specific points of process, but they are all simultaneous while they are yet uh, one after another. They 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 follow one another, but at the same time they're simultaneous. I know that sounds foolish, but the word of the Lord is full of paradox and seeming seemingly contradictions. But yet to the man who is spiritual, it will make spiritual sense. And so it is conjugated in this manner. I am saved, I am being saved, and I will be saved. I want to say that again for you. I am saved. That is present tense. Right now, I am saved and I can't get any more saveder than I am right now. Because that initial salvation, that initial deliverance, that initial uh, process of breaking from the connection from the head of sin is the work of God. And beloved, the Bible says that God does all things well. I want you to know that, that he does what he does very well. But you are saved right now. You may be doubting your salvation. You may be doubting that you were deliverance, but I... I'm here to tell you that if you call upon the name of the Lord, the Bible says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. It didn't say that if you feel as if you are saved, you're saved. That's why salvation is in the hand of God. It is not left up to our feelings. Otherwise, on any given day, uh, any of us could not feel as if we're saved. So the conjugation of our salvation and our sanctification follows this trajectory. I am saved. I am being saved. So while he has already saved me, he is yet saving me. In other words, he's taking me through a process. A process that will help me to grow in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. A process where it will... Uh, secure me in my faith and help me not to cast away the confidence that I have with him because it is great uh, recompense of reward. Uh, this being saved is just as that word being, it is a continual state. As a disciple, we are to follow Christ, not only just from our initial decision to follow him, but beloved, we are to follow him for the rest of our lives the journey, for the duration, for the longevity, endurance in the race. That is what being saved is. So yes, there are days when you will not feel as if you're saved. There will be days when you don't feel like you are sanctified. There will be days and nights when you don't feel like serving the Lord. You may not even feel like praising him. But I'm here to tell you that what God has done in your life and what he has uh, accomplished on your behalf in terms of delivering you from sin is a sure thing. And it is done. Amen. As Jesus said on the cross, it is finished. So I am saved. I am being saved and I will be saved. So that is past, present, past, present, present and future present. So while I am being saved, I have also, he has also completed the work in me. 
Praise God. He who has begun a good work in me shall do what? He shall complete it. Amen. He shall, he is the author and the finisher of our faith. And I praise God for him being the author and the finisher of my faith, not me being the author and the finisher of, the, of my faith. In other words, God has written the script of my life and he will finish the script of my life. And that's a beautiful thing because we can put full trust and confidence in him that whatever he has begun, he will perform it according to his word. So, beloved, there are three things that I want to share with you, three points of sanctification that I want to share with you on today. The first is that the Holy Spirit sanctifies you. The Holy Spirit sanctifies you. This is a triune point um, of discussion here. First, the Holy Spirit sanctifies you. The Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, that Spirit that was given on the day of Pentecost when he said to them, you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. That Spirit, that self-same Spirit is the one who sanctifies you. And I want to point out that it is him who sanctifies, not it who sanctifies. There is the experience with the Holy Ghost. And then there is the person of the Holy Spirit, the, the paraclete, the one who is with you, the one who walks with you to lead you and to guide you into all truth, the one who teaches you, the one who is your trainer, the one who is your personal assistant. That living spirit from God is what you need to continue on in this journey. And if you don't have the Holy Ghost today, I want to invite you right now to bow your head and say, Lord, fill me with the Spirit. Fill me with your presence, O God. Fill me with the Holy Ghost so that I may have power from on high to be a witness and a light to all who come in contact with me. You can receive the gift of the Holy Ghost right now. All you have to do is accept the free gift that God has given unto you. And so the Holy Spirit sanctifies you. How does he sanctify you? He sanctifies you through these three things, obedience, submission, and accountability. First of all, obedience to the Spirit. You know, the Bible says, do not quench the Spirit. Now, I know some of you think that means when the music is going at church, you, shouldn't, you should get up and shout and dance and run around the church. Uh, that's what we kind of thought uh, quenching the Spirit was when I grew up. You know, you don't, you let it go. You let yourself go in the Spirit. But quenching the Spirit means that when the Holy Ghost speaks to you, give yourself to obedience. When He speaks to your heart, when, he's ta when He talks to you, when you're at the point of decision and you don't know what to do, and the Holy Spirit comes to you and says, follow this way or do this way, or He brings the Scripture to your remembrance, that you would honor the Spirit of God with obedience. Because that is how he sanctifies you. He fashions you into an obedient child of God. And then secondly, he, uh, we, 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 are, we are sanctified through submission. In other words, there's a humility that God, I don't know the way. I, I'm, I'm not smart enough to know the way that you have for me. But I know that you know the way for me. Remember in Job 23, 10, when he says, that uh, God knows the way that I should go. And when he is finished with me, I shall come out as pure gold. He, is, he tries me and I come out as pure gold when God, when I submit to, my, uh, submit to the Lord, to the Spirit of God and allow him to guide me. And then finally, accountability. Uh, there's a lot of talk about uh, accountability in the church. As a matter of fact, I come across uh, many people who desire an accountability partner, uh, what is called an accountability partner. But I want to say this, your first accountability partner is the Holy Ghost. Your first accountability partner is the Holy Ghost. If you can't accept him as accountability partner, it's, it, it's, it's a bit of a diss uh, to then say to God, well, I, I don't want your spirit. I want a real person as an accountability partner. Not saying that you can't have a real person as, account as an accountability partner, but you've got to learn how to trust in God and how to trust his spirit to lead you and lead and guide you. 
And then, praise God, I believe that God will bring others into your life that will serve as human accountability partners. But we need to understand that the Holy Spirit sanctifies us through obedience. He sanctifies us through submission. And he sanctifies us with our willing accountability. And then second, beloved, I want to say to you that you, are, you sanctify yourself. The Bible declares that uh, we, if we sanctify ourselves, the very God of peace shall sanctify us completely or wholly. W-H-O-L-L-Y. And so what I want to say to you is that there is a responsibility that you have in your sanctification. I would call it daily maintenance or your own sense of responsibility in making choices and decisions that honor God. So how do we sanctify ourselves? How do we do that? The first thing is self-control. One of the fruit of the Spirit is self-control. So if you have the Spirit, you have what it takes to control yourself. It's not right to pray to God and ask God to control you when God has given you the power to control yourself. You may not hear teaching like this in your church, but I'm going to tell you the truth because I love you. You have the power given to you from God to control yourself. You may say sometimes, I, I, have the, I can't help it. I, I, when I see him or when I see her, I just fall to pieces. Well, beloved, I want to tell you something. You're going to have to learn how to control yourself because that is a fruit of the Spirit given to you so that you learn sanctification. Or it is a tool whereby you can experience self-discipline, uh, which is the next thing, self-discipline. How do I discipline myself? Well, I have to learn through, sometimes through trial and error, that if I fall in a, a hole, and I didn't see the hole the first time, the second time I come to that hole, I should have learned by my previous experiences that I should go around the hole or avoid the hole or perhaps not even go down the street that the hole is on. And so by experience, we learn self-discipline. Sometimes they say experience is the best teacher, but um, that is true in certain cases. And then sometimes you can see what others have done and see how it has negatively affected them and say to ourselves, I am not going to be like that. I am not going to follow that path because that path brings this type of negativity that I don't want for my life. So we sanctify or you sanctify yourselves, uh, yourself through self-control, self-discipline and temperance. Temperance. In other words, that's balance. We can't be so sanctified, so holy, so spiritual that we have no connection to real people. You know anybody like that? And at the same time, we can't be so worldly, so carnal minded that we, we, we can't even connect with God. We, we don't have a connection to his word because our minds are so carnal. Um, and, and thinking worldly. So, so there must be temperance or, or balance in your life, perfect balance. And that's how, the Holy, that's how the Holy Ghost works with us to sanctify ourselves because what we need to be is a balanced, controlled, disciplined follower of Christ. You know, he doesn't need anybody that he's got to always run around and find out why you back in the club again and why you back in the bed with Johnny or Betty again or why are you doing this again and having to come and rescue you every day. Some of that, beloved, is your own fault because you will not discipline yourself. You, you, you just won't discipline yourself. You, you have to discipline yourself. You have to sanctify yourself through discipline. You have to sanctify yourself through self-control. And that, notice that word self self-control and you have to sanctify yourself through temperance and then finally we are sanctified through troubles and you may not say man on this but God uses troubles trials situations circumstances uh, incidents to sanctify you he allows challenges to come your way to sanctify you to pull you closer to him to pull you into deeper consecration with him. Because sometimes we can forget the fact that we still need the Lord. I don't care how saved you get, beloved. I don't care how much you think that you have arrived. 
Listen to me. Let me tell you something that you still need Jesus. Amen. And so that is why we have to understand that our dependence on God is always going to be connected to our ability or our submission to him, our desire for him to sanctify us and continue in us the process that he has begun. David said in Psalm 119 and 71, it is good for me that I was afflicted, that I might learn thy law. Many times we take the wrong perspective in our sanctification. We have the wrong view. Uh, we're looking at it the wrong way because we think it's the devil on our back and we think the devil is busy. But really and truly, beloved saints of God, it is God who is orchestrating the events of your life to bring you to a place of understanding. And so he uses trouble. He allows affliction. Many of the afflictions of the righteous, but what? The Lord shall deliver them him out of them all. In Psalm 66, David writes that you have allowed the horses to ride over us, but you shall bring us into a wealthy place. God allows afflictions. He allows troubles. He allows things to happen to us, uh, to those we love sometimes. Uh, he's not punishing us, but he is making us. Beloved, it is good for you. No chastisement or trouble or trials or anything like that is pleasant for the moment, but I declare to you that if you will accept and humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, that in due season, he will exalt you. And what's good for the goose is good for the gander, so that applies to me as well. Praise God. But I want you to understand that uh, sanctification comes through the Holy Spirit. Sanctification comes through you sanctifying yourself. And sanctification comes through troubles that God allows to come into your life. And on today, I want to bless you and thank you so much for taking, taking a moment out to listen and to hear with your heart, not just intellectually, but to understand what the Spirit is saying to you, the believer, his child, uh, his charge. And uh, today that you would take this information and begin to apply it to your life. Information without, um, without application, it brings no fruit. Uh, if you want to see fruit, if you want to see God move in your life the way you've heard him move in other people's lives, take this information and apply it to your life. Don't just say amen. Don't just say that was good, but take it and use it. Like Jesus said uh, during the um, communion, he says, take and eat, drink all of it. Use all of it. Use it for your benefit. Amen. And so I praise God for you. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we do thank you today for this word, O oh God. It is a light unto our pathway and a lamp unto our feet. And I pray for this young man, this young woman watching me. I pray for this old man, or old woman, whoever it might be. I pray for friend, for foe, whoever they might be, Lord God, that they would be touched in the deepest parts of their soul that their minds would be illuminated by this everlasting gospel, and that they, O oh God, would be drawn to you, the Savior, the Keeper, he who is able to do all things exceedingly well. And I bless you today, Lord God, for just an opportunity to share this gospel of life, this powerful word that is able to change um, anyone. Thank you for it, Lord God, and we bless you for it in Jesus' name. And we sanctify your word as it goes out. Amen and amen.